1 Peter chapter 5, and starting in verse 5. Uh, got some of the young people here with us tonight. I'm glad you're here. And there's some good things in this message for you. Now, you won't get everything, but uh, there'll be some real good things for you. I hope that you'll, you'll listen. Last week, we looked at faithfulness. Faithfulness is a, a wonderful quality. Aren't you glad God is faithful? And that, that's our goal, is to try and be like, like the Lord Jesus. And in this chapter, he talks about a lot of different attitudes of, that come with spiritual maturity. Uh, submission. Hey, girls, you don't need to talk while you do that, all right? That's all right. 1 Peter chapter 5. He talks about submission, humility, trust. Uh, later on, we're not looking at tonight, but self-control, vigilance, hope, worship. Those are all areas that um, become clearer as you grow in the Lord and become more um, practiced in your life as, as you grow in the Lord. And he, he starts tonight with the word, likewise, likewise. Let me read. Likewise, ye younger, submit yourselves unto the elder. Yea, all of you be subject one to another and be clothed with humility. For God resisteth the proud and giveth grace to the humble. Humble yourselves therefore under the mighty hand of God, that he may exalt you in due time, casting all your care upon him, for he careth for you. There's some great verses there. Now, the word likewise, he's, he's talked about this before. In, in a, he's talking about some similar things. Uh, the book of Peter talks several times about humility and sub submission. Uh, for instance, in chapter 2, uh, verse 13, he talked about um, submit yourselves to every ordinance of man. We're to be submissive to human leadership. Uh, in chapter 2, verse 18, servants be subject to your masters. We're to be submissive to our boss. In chapter 3, he talks about wives be in subjection to your own husband. There's submission in, in marriage. And then uh, last week we looked at uh, the pastor in verses 1 through 4. And a pastor is to be submissive to the Lord, isn't it? You, you'd, you'd hope. <laughs> you know, and There's things you'd hope a pastor wouldn't do and some things you hope he would do. And he's, what he's saying here is, like the pastor submits to God, you do the same. Likewise. And he uses, a, I think it's a great expression there in the middle of verse 5, be clothed with humility. Let's see, what am I going to put on today? Let's see. Let's start by being clothed with humility. Uh, we were talking before service, and I, you know, I, I keep telling myself, humility is a good thing. <laughs> Have you ever heard the word humiliated? Yes. Humility is a good thing. When you get humiliated, thank you. Thank you for that. Humility is a good thing. I can be humble. Don't be proud of your humility. All right? I had a lady tell me that. She was so proud of her humility. I said, well, you know, you should write a book, Humility and How I Attained It. And unfortunately, she then said, yeah, I should. <laughs> oh, well. Uh, some people just don't get it, do they? Uh, God's talking here about humility and, and submission, clothed with humility. The, the picture there is exactly what Jesus did when they went into the house and he washed their feet. Uh, I wrote down the verse here. Let me find it. Um, it's John 13, verse 4. The cultural thing in that day was when you came into someone's home, they washed your feet. You know, people wore sandals. They, they walked in the dirt. And they didn't have baths all the time like we do, you know. They're, they needed their feet washed. Well, they, they got together, him and the disciples, and nobody was doing what they were supposed to do. Jesus did it. And the, the Bible says in, in John 13, 4, he riseth from supper and laid aside his garments and took a towel and girded himself. He put on the apron. And, and that's exactly the picture that he's talking about there. Put on the, uh, be clothed with humility. Put on the apron of service. You know, if you're at a function, maybe you're an important visitor, you know, you're the guest of honor. You don't wear an apron, do you? Who wears the apron? The servants. God says, that's supposed to be us. We need to be servants. We need to be clothed with humility. We need to be like Jesus. Um, don't wait to be served. You know, don't wait for somebody to wait on you. Don't wait for somebody to be friendly to you. 
Don't wait for somebody to do the thing for you. Do it for them. And maybe you'll reap in due time, like he talks about here. Uh, Jesus even submitted to his parents, it talks about. He uses the same word in, in Luke 2.51, how he put himself under his parents. That must have been strange. And, and the key here, I think, is in verse 6. Humble yourselves, therefore, under the mighty hand of God. You say, that shouldn't be hard. The mighty hand of God, you know. Well, we struggle submitting to each other, don't we? But the mighty hand of God, oh, that should be easy. No, <laughs> it's not. Uh, because we're, we're just contrary. And uh, we're, we just tend to want our own way and be proud and, and so on. God is telling us here to be humble. Now, let me say this. Y young people, listen to me here. The main reason you'll have arguments is not because you're humble. The main reason you'll have fights or disobey your parents, it's not because you're humble, it's because you're proud. You don't want somebody telling you what to do. You don't want somebody telling you you're wrong. And that's what he's talking about here. Be humble. And it starts with submitting to God. There's a lot of verses in the Bible about this. Uh, let, let me read you one from uh, Micah chapter 6. He hath showed thee, O man, what is good. And what doth the Lord require of thee but to do justly and to love mercy and to walk humbly with thy God? You know, one of the most basic things of life is we should walk humbly with our God. Um, the Bible says you're going to reap what you sow. If you sow pride, that's the harvest you're going to get. Let me read you a verse from Proverbs. He says, it's talking, he, surely he, that's God, scorneth, the scorners, but he giveth grace unto the lowly. You know what a scorner is? That's a proud person who says, oh, they're nothing to me. They're not, they not as good as me. God scorns the scorner, but he gives grace to the lowly. That's the, the humble. Now, you're going to reap what you sow. Um, pride cometh before what, does the Bible say, you know? Pride, pride cometh before destruction and Haughty spirit before a fall, I think the rest of that. See, pride leads you to a fall. God wants us to humble ourselves. The opposite of submission is pride. Now, why is that a problem? You know, the world says, oh, be proud. Be proud of your team. Be proud of this. Be proud of your sin. I mean, the world really gets carried away, don't they? Why is it a problem when we're proud? Well, look at Proverbs chapter 6. It's important to know what God hates. Do you know there's some things God hates? Do you know that? There's some things God loves, but Proverbs chapter 6, verse 16, he tells us some. He gives us a list. He adds to it as he's writing it. <laughs> These six things doth the Lord hate, yea, seven are an abomination unto him. Abomination means it's really, really bad. And what's the first one? A proud look. A proud look. God hates that. A lying tongue hands that shed innocent blood, and heart that deviseth wicked imaginations, feet that be swift in running to mischief. God hates people that are always getting in trouble. He doesn't want you to be always looking for mischief. A false witness that speaketh lies, and he that soweth discord among brethren. God says he hates those things. And the first one is, is a proud look. Later in chapter 8, verse 13, he says, the fear of the Lord is to hate evil. First thing, Pride and arrogancy and the evil way and the froward mouth do I hate. You know, stop and think about it. Pride was Satan's sin. I'll be like God. I'll take God's place. Really, pride was Eve's sin. See, Satan had deceived her and told her, if you eat this, you'll be like God. So her, her sin was, oh, oh great, I can, I'm going to be like God. Just like Satan. But the Bible says pride is a part of worldliness not godliness. In 1 John, he, he talks about it when he says, um, all that is in the world, the lust of the flesh and the lust of the eyes and the pride of life is not of the Father, but is of the world. That's the way the world lives. That's why there's wars and fighting. It's because people are proud and they, they don't want to uh, humble themselves before God. The antidote, well, as I was writing my notes, I, I used the word antidote, and I, as I was thinking about it today, I thought maybe it's, better word might be the vaccination. <laughs> uh, this is not just the cure. Uh, the antidote for pride is grace. Well, maybe the vaccination for pride is grace. Uh, keep us from, from being proud. It's not works. 
The opposite of grace is work. And we usually, the way we solve things is we work at, we work harder. I can solve this. Uh, in 1 Peter 5, in verse 5, at the end of it, he says, God resisteth the proud and giveth grace unto the humble. Listen, you don't want God resisting you. <laughs> That's a battle you can't win. God resisteth the proud but giveth and giveth grace to the humble. You know, in any situation, here's a question you can ask yourself. Am I doing this because of pride? That's a good question. Am I doing this because of pride? Maybe another one would be, do I want my blessing or God's blessing? Stop and ask yourself. You know, in, a, in a situation where you're trying to work something out, do you want your blessing or do you want God's blessing? In verse 6, he says, Humble yourselves, therefore, under the mighty hand of God, that he may exalt you in due time. Listen, do you want God to exalt you, or do you want to exalt yourself? I can guarantee you, God will do a better job than you will. Isaiah put it this way, Isaiah 57, uh, verse 15. For thus saith the high and lofty one that inhabiteth eternity, whose name is holy. I dwell in the high and holy place with him also, that is of a contrite and humble spirit, to revive the spirit of the humble and to revive the heart of the contrite one. See, we, can, we can know God's blessing if we'll just humble ourselves before him. You know, pride is often our answer. But like one guy says, how's that working for you? <laughs> you know, it, it just doesn't bring us the results we really want. We think, oh, I'll, I'll defend myself. That's not going to help us. Humility is applied by faith. Humility is when you're trusting the Lord rather than yourself, rather than the situation. Uh, we put ourselves, like he says there in verse 6, under the mighty hand of God. You see that phrase? Humble yourselves, therefore, under the mighty hand of God. That's faith. We're saying God is almighty. I can trust him. I'll put myself under his control. Uh, it means we believe what the Bible says. We believe what God has said. God says, faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. Trust in the Lord with all thine heart and lean not unto thine own understanding. In all thy ways acknowledge him and he shall direct thy paths. And then he talks about some of the results of humility and submission. Uh, verse 7, casting all your care upon him for he careth for you. Every one of us need to know that verse. Casting all your care upon him for he careth for you. You know, one of the results of humility and submission is you're not going to have to carry the weight yourself. You won't have to carry the weight yourself. That word casting, um, it, it's used when it talks about them, they cast their garments on the colt. You remember when Jesus rode through uh, the town? It says they cast their garments on the colt. It meant they weren't carrying them anymore. The colt was. Well, casting all your cares upon the Lord means you're not carrying your burdens anymore. The Lord is. And what a blessing that is. Uh, there's a, a psalm, Psalm 55 and uh, verse 22. A lot of these things are expressed so wonderfully in the psalms. He says, cast thy burden upon the Lord, and he shall sustain thee. He shall never suffer the righteous to be moved. Cast thy burden upon the Lord, and he shall sustain thee. So one of the results of humility and submission is you don't carry the weight yourself. The, Lord's, the Lord takes it. What's the verse we, we learned the other day? Come unto me, all ye that labor and are heavy laden. I'll give you rest. He'll, he'll get in yoke with you. He'll, he'll take the burden. Secondly, we experience his mighty hand. If you'll submit yourself to the Lord, you'll experience God's mighty hand. You know, like Israel, as, as they trusted God and left Egypt and so on, man, they had some experiences, didn't they? <laughs> they had some things went on that, Nobody had ever seen before and, and never seen since. Uh, you know, the problem is often pride is the basis of what we, how we operate. Uh, living verse 6 is very different. Humble yourselves, therefore, under the mighty hand of God, that he may exalt you in due time. Um, some of the things that result when we submit ourselves to the Lord, uh, these are just a few, uh, he'll give you courage. You know, life takes courage, doesn't it? Well, somebody said, old age is not for the faint-hearted. Uh, well, life is not for the faint-hearted. Uh, Isaiah wrote, Isaiah 41, verse 10, Fear thou not, for I am with thee. Be not dismayed, for I am thy God. And you see, putting yourself under the mighty hand of God will help you. 
I will strengthen thee. Yea, I will help thee. Yea, I will uphold thee with the right hand of my righteousness. It's his mighty hand. It'll give us courage. Uh, James told us he'll give us wisdom. You put yourself under the mighty hand of God, that means that when you don't know what to do, you'll say, Lord, what should I do? And he says, if any of you lack wisdom, let him ask of God, that giveth to all men liberally, and that braideth not, and it shall be given. He won't rebuke you for asking. He'll, he'll help you. Uh, he'll give us strength. Most of you probably know Philippians 4.13, I can do all things through Christ which strengtheneth me. Well, it's not you doing it. It's the mighty hand of God. Uh, he'll give us faith and, and so on. Uh, humility and, and submission. Uh, number one, we cast our cares on him. Number two, we experience his mighty hand. But number three there in, in Peter, our timing will be right. You ever worry about the timing of what you're going to do? Well, he says that he'll exalt you in due time. That means the right time. Uh, you know, you can do something too soon. You can do something too late. Uh, God, we need God's timing on things. Humble yourselves, therefore, under the mighty hand of God, that he may exalt you in due time. One of the main signs of pride is impatience. <laughs> you know, I want it. Lord, give me patience and give it to me now. <laughs> uh, we get so impatient. Uh, the Bible tells us to wait on the Lord. That's an interesting expression. I'm not sure I completely understand it, but I understand the word wait. Um, there was an evangelist when I was a kid. He used to sing a song, I don't know why, called Take an Old Cold Tater and Wait. <laughs> uh, not quite scripture, but uh, Psalm 27, 14, he says, Wait on the Lord, be of good courage, and he shall strengthen thine heart. Wait, I say, on the Lord. We need God's timing. Uh, and that comes when we humble ourselves before him. We've all probably had it happen where we've rushed something, we've gotten ahead of the Lord, and, oh, why did I do that? It would have been so much better if I'd accepted God's timing. When you think about it, humility and submission should be really basic to the Christian life, shouldn't it? Especially to the Lord. You know, humility before God, that just makes sense. He's the almighty God. Of course we should be humble before him. Submission to him. Of course, he's God. And yet, how often do we, we struggle with it? Turn, if you would, to James chapter 4. It should be just a couple of pages to the left. James chapter 4, verse 4. This is a common subject, and I wanted just to read verses 4 through 10 here in James because he gives such a, a good perspective on it. James chapter 4, verse 4. Ye adulterers and adulteresses, Know ye not that the friendship of the world is enmity with God? Whosoever therefore will be a friend of the world is the enemy of God. What he's talking about there is when you don't submit to God, you submit to the world. He says that's, that's the opposite of what's right. Verse 5. Do you think that the scripture saith in vain, the spirit that dwelleth in us lusteth to envy? God says this is a problem because we're, we're vain. We're, we're wicked. You know, we, we tend to do that way. We've got to consciously submit ourselves to God. Verse 6, but he giveth more grace. Wherefore he saith, God resisteth the proud, but giveth grace unto the humble. Submit yourselves therefore to God. Resist the devil, he will flee from you. Draw nigh to God, and he will draw nigh to you. Cleanse your hands, ye sinners, and purify your hearts, ye double-minded. Be afflicted, and mourn, and weep. Let your laughter be turned to mourning, and your joy to heaviness. Humble yourselves in the sight of the Lord, and he shall lift you up. That's what we're talking about tonight. Uh, we, want, we want to experience what God wants for us. I hope you do. That means we have to quit wanting what we want and look for what God has. Humble yourself, uh, therefore, uh, humble yourself in the sight of the Lord, and he shall lift you up. When we submit to God, if you'll submit to God, if I'll submit to God, then we'll have the added result that we'll submit to each other. We'll have right relationships with each other. Uh, 1 Peter 5 and, and verse 5 is, you know, that's really where, where we started, wasn't it? Likewise, ye younger, submit yourselves unto the elder. Yea, all of you be subject one to another and be clothed with humility. It's never going to help us to operate in our relationships by pride. 
Oh, they shouldn't have said that to me. Oh, I know what they meant when they said that to me. <laughs> For God resisteth the proud and giveth grace to the humble. Listen, you want to get it even with somebody? Don't be proud. Let God resist them. <laughs> you know, you be the one that's humble. Yeah, that, that would be the wrong motive, wouldn't it? Uh, God resisteth the proud and giveth grace to the humble. That's where we want to be. We want to be clothed with, with humility. And it'll help us. We won't operate by pride if we're submitted to God. We'll practice grace. You know, that should be such an important part of our lives, grace towards each other. Listen, I'm going to say and do the wrong thing. I talk more than most of you, and so I'm going to say and do more wrong things than most of you. So I need your grace. <laughs> and on occasion, you're going to say something, and it might be the wrong thing, or I might take it wrong. I've got to practice grace. And if we'll be in submission to God, listen, these things in eternity, most of the things that give us such a problem now, there will be nothing in eternity. Nothing. Uh, we won't operate by pride. We'll practice grace. Over and over, God says things like, a singing with grace in your heart to the Lord. Let your speech be always with grace. Those are both in Colossians. In Hebrews, he says, it's a good thing that the heart be established with grace. In, in uh, writing out my notes, I was going to put down that Paul often ended his letters with something like, grace be with you. But as, as I looked it up, I had to say, he ended every letter with grace be with you. And uh, if you think he wrote Hebrews, he ended that with grace be with you all. And the Bible ends with the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ be with you all. <laughs> uh, I think it's important that we practice grace. And that starts with submission to God. It'll help us to have grace towards each other. Um, We'll not only op not operate by pride, we'll practice grace, but we'll live by faith. One of the examples that, that came to my mind, because it's here in, in Peter, uh, God tells a wife to submit to her husband. A wife can submit to her husband because her faith is not in her husband, but in the Lord. That's the key. Now, you correct me if I'm wrong in this. I've been thinking about this for a while. I don't think the Bible actually tells a wife to trust her husband. Maybe it's in there somewhere. It does tell her to submit to her husband. It doesn't tell a husband to trust his wife. It tells him to love his wife. It tells you to trust the Lord. Now, again, it, I think we should be able to trust each other as best we can, but I'll guarantee at some point you're going to fail. <laughs> uh, we all do. We, we'll live by faith, and that will affect every area of our life. Children to parents, parents to children. And we'll, we will be able to cast all our cares on him. And stop and think about that verse. Casting all your care upon him, for he careth for you. What a blessing. Why would we in insist on carrying our own burdens? I mean, why would we do that? Pride. Why can't we cast our cares on the Lord? I tell you the reason I think is because we're not trusting the Lord. You know, in pride, we said, oh, oh, I can get it. Have you ever been working with some little kid and, you, you know, something that there's no way in the world they can, they can do? Oh, I can, oh, do it. Oh. <laughs> uh, that's the way we are before the Lord. We need to humble ourselves. If the, the problem is, oftentimes, instead of trusting the Lord, we're trusting someone or something else. And when that someone or something else fails, man, we're devastated. You've seen it happen. Someone loses a loved one. Someone loses their job. Someone uh, loses a relationship. And man, it's their world falls apart. Some of us even end up in a mental home and, and, and so on. Why? Because they're not trusting the Lord. And listen, Christians go through difficult times, but it shouldn't destroy us. The Bible says Jesus never failed, and that's the one our, our trust is in. There's a Many, many verses. Let me read two of them to you. Psalm 18, verse 30. As for God, his way is perfect. The word of the Lord is tried. He's a buckler to all those that trust in him. We've sung that in our, our Sunday school. Uh, God is, is perfect. It's been tried. It's been proven. He has been. Uh, later in Psalm um, where am I here? 20, verse 7. 
Some trust in chariots and some in horses, but we will remember the name of the Lord our God. And don't trust the wrong thing. Trust the Lord. Paul understood what it was to cast his cares on the Lord. Turn to 2 Corinthians chapter 4. 2 Corinthians chapter 4 and uh, verse 7. Almost done. If you know anything about the life of Paul, man, he went, he went through lots of trouble. People followed him from town to town trying to get him arrested and killed. I mean, I can't imagine that. I think it's, I think it's bad if somebody just doesn't want to talk to me when I knock on their door. <laughs> we, we don't know what persecution really is. 2 Corinthians 4, verse 7, he says, We have this treasure in earthen vessels that the excellency of the power may be of God and not of us. What he's talking about is the frailty of our human lives. We're, we're just earthen vessels. Because God didn't want us to trust ourselves. He wants us to trust him. And here, listen to this now, verse 8. Boys, you listening? We are troubled on every side, yet not distressed. We are perplexed, but not in despair. Persecuted, but not forsaken. Cast down, but not destroyed. Always bearing about in the body the dying of the Lord Jesus, that the life also of Jesus might be made manifest in our body. The verses we're, we're learning from Wednesday night are verse, uh, verse 17, I'm sorry, verse 16. For which cause we faint not. Though our outward man perish, yet the inward man is renewed day by day. For our light affliction, which is but for a moment, worketh for us a far more exceeding and eternal weight of glory. While we look not at the things which are seen, but at the things which are not seen. So there's an enigma for you, looking at things you can't see. He says... The things which are seen are temporal. It means temporary. But the things which are not seen are eternal. Our trust is in the invisible, almighty God. It's not in this world. It's, it's not in relationships in this world. It's in Jesus Christ. Now, you have a choice. You can live for yourself and your pride and keep your cares. There's one. Or you can live for the Lord in humility and in submission and cast all your cares on him. I know which choice I'm going with. Now, I know I struggle with it sometimes because we tend to be proud and arrogant and so on. But, but that's really the choice we're, we're looking at here. Um, again, Isaiah, let me just give you, give you this verse. It's Isaiah 26, verse 3. Get my Bible to turn. Thou wilt keep him in perfect peace, whose mind is stayed on thee, because he trusteth in thee. There's the key. See, the reason we don't cast our cares on the Lord, because we don't trust the Lord. Thou wilt keep him in perfect peace, whose mind is stayed on thee, because he trusteth in thee. That doesn't mean you won't have any sorrow. Oh, listen, Christians have plenty of sorrow. But it does mean that God will go with you in your sorrow. Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I'll fear no evil, for thou art with me. He'll take the weight. He'll take the weight. And the Bible says there in Peter that he'll exalt you in due time. We know that there's hope. We know that God has a good purpose in the things that we're going through. Let me, let me finish by reading verses 10 and 11 of chapter 5 there. But the God of all grace, who hath called us unto his eternal glory by Christ Jesus, after that you've suffered a while, Make you perfect, establish, strengthen, settle you. To him be glory and dominion forever and ever. You see, that's our hope. It's not this life that we're, this is not the, the end of it. This is just the, the way through. This world's not my home, I'm just passing through. And God has a purpose. We have hope in the Lord Jesus. We have hope because of Jesus. I thought we'd finish with uh, page 182 in our songbook, which is the song, Jesus Never Fails. You want to 